Hi, and welcome to Operational Excellence in Digital Work. Today we will be speaking about how on-demand teams apply work management, automation, and AI to scale faster. We are joined by presenters Margot Visitation, VP and Principal Analyst at Forrester Research, and Andrew Filev, CEO of Reich. If you have any questions during the session, feel free to enter them in chat and we'll get back to you as best we can. I'll now pass it to the presenters to begin. Margo, welcome. Thank you. Um, Reich headquarters. You've done amazing research on the topics of collaborative work management, digital transformation, so it's honor and pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much. Um, I hope the audience will, will get a chance to uh, learn how to run their companies better in this new uh, digital world. Yeah, no, absolutely. Thank you for having me. You know, it's really uh, such an interesting time that you know, in digital transformation that what we're seeing is that the number one core element of this uh, of the move to digital is really all about customers. What we see at Forrester, and we, we talk about the age of the customer and, and customer-obsessed organizations, is that now with the advent of digital, customers have more ways than ever to interact with, with an organization. You know, they are, they are researching uh, online to find out what products they want. They are, uh, you know, doing a lot of reviewing and, and, and engaging in a number of different ways. So customers now are, have become empowered. They can engage with a company for products and services and where it used to be just you went into the store, maybe you made a phone call. Now you've got the online experience, you've got the social experience, uh, and you may go through that, those, those avenues before you ever, or if you ever talk to uh, the company that you're buying products and services. But at the center of that, Customers now expect to have the same great level of experience, and are very you know it, regardless of the avenue that they're interacting uh, with with a company, um, and, and whether that is at, on the consumer side or whether it's on the business side, and that expectation of great experiences is empowering to the customer. But when you think about the companies that are selling products and services, that can create real chaos for them because now you know they're there aren't limited avenues for information. There aren't limited avenues for review. So that can create chaos for an organization. So that creates a lot of pressure in the companies uh, and also a lot of opportunities as well. Mm -hmm. um, and we see the whole uh, industry has changed nearly overnight. Um, we see uh, a lot of competitive pressure mm -hmm. uh, where companies are starting to feel like they're losing market share or vice versa. They see an incredible opportunity to gain market share. Um, and what this leads to is complete change in the w in the work cycles. Uh, what I remember, um, you know, from 20 years ago, is those long, mm -hmm. uh, multi-year um, projects, yep. uh, strategic projects that permeated not just construction industry, where there's still it's still the case, but also uh, the strategic marketing projects that spend the whole year. Versus in the digital world, it's very very fast paced. Uh, almost real time, mm -hmm. where it's, it's multi-channel, mm -hmm. multi-product, a lot of customization, a lot of that reactive um, activities that you either reacting to the new trend in the market or competitive move of the customer. So the pace of work is rapidly accelerating. Uh, another uh, interesting uh, trend that's going on uh, that affects uh, both their outside of the company and the inside uh, is uh, the mobile revolution, right? Mm -hmm. We're all carrying their uh, very powerful computers in our pockets. That's changing the way customers expect us to deliver mm -hmm. the services, but that also changes the way we work. And speaking about that um, transformation within the company, um, one other fundamental change is that the rise of the distributed workforce, where through globalization, through communication technologies, it became so much easier to run virtual teams, mm -hmm. but it comes with its own challenges where communication in those virtual environments is much harder. Um, and, and that also drives par partially drives that communication overload. Uh, all of the things that we just discussed, that, that fast pace, that distributed teams, that uh, overwhelms people with information spread across different channels. And you know, when you really think about that, and we've seen studies out there, and what, you know, Forrester has done studies, and other organizations have done studies. One, you know, for example, is the IBM uh, C-suite study. You know, that they asked leading CEOs what, you know, what 
digital was going to do, how it was going to impact them. And, you know, 81% of them believe that there's going to be more digital and virtual interactions than, than ever before. And, you know, as we spoke about earlier, that really is the case. People investigate before, the, you know, they purchase online far more than they've ever bef done before. You know, it's even beginning to outpace brick and mortar sales. And not just at the consumer market, but at the business market. People are going to be working and continue to evolve the way that they work on a day-to-day -day basis. You're not going to be sitting in the cube farm anymore. You're not going to be even sitting in a, in a room. If your partners or your coworkers are you know, scattered all over the world, you're going to be working you know, in, in a travel situation. And now 30% you know, of information workers, and we are all information workers today. You, know, you work leveraging email, the computer in your pocket. You're commuting and you're working while traveling. You, can't, you don't wait any longer till you get to your hotel room to answer an email or get to your office. You're doing it while you're en route. And 45% of information workers are now using mobile, not just to check email, but to actually do their jobs. As part of their work processes or part of their project work, they're using mobile. It's become so commonplace that even customers now expect that the companies that they do business with are going to be using mobile. Yeah, and, and what the on-demand economy uh, brings to us um, is again challenges and opportunities. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm personally fascinated uh, by all of the success stories where you you have an industry that's been uh, developing for literally thousands of years, like mm -hmm. hospitality, mm -hmm. and then a new company comes, like Airbnb, and over a very short period of time, uh, like a span that's five years, which is literally like a blink of an eye mm -hmm. in their, in their um, global scheme of things, completely changes the customer experience and delivers a uh, new innovative product that, that rapidly becomes a new standard that, that everybody expects. Mm -hmm. you, you look at companies like Uber, you look at companies like Tesla that now builds the car on demand as you, you put mm -hmm. your purchase order on their website, they, uh, they build the car to your spec and deliver it literally in a truck to your door. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, I, that creates amazing opportunities. That also creates amazing pressure if you're already on that, that share of the market. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was always fascinated to look uh, and try to figure out what uh, differs the company who succeed on that journey mm -hmm. from the ones that are still learning and, and figuring it out. Um, and we call that uh, operational excellence, right? It's uh, I like building that maturity. Building that maturity. So phase one of, of that journey is is what I call personally call creative chaos. Mm -hmm. um, and in 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 that phase, you've got a, a team of very smart, dedicated people uh, who rapidly prototype, they experiment, they deliver the first version of that product or the right. first version of that service. Um, and, and it works, right? It's a mm -hmm. miracle by itself. Some companies get there, some don't. Uh, but it's only then turns out to be the first uh, step of a much, much, And it's much a small team. Exactly. That's yeah. doing that, right. Yeah. And, it's, and, and, mm -hmm. and now, uh, now you have to figure out how to deliver the same product or service to m thousands of businesses or millions of consumers. And that's where it, it you have to go through the journey from the creative chaos, or as we mm -hmm. call it internally, reactive way of working, mm -hmm. uh, to that more controlled scaling environment where you rapidly scale and you continue right. to optimize. So which means you're bringing in different people into, the, into, the, uh, into that team environments, now not just a small focused team, you're now including your broader operations as part of this. Exactly, mm -hmm. and, and, and that usually means that uh, you're also starting to build processes you also build more discipline around quality and uh, scheduling. And you want to do it in a way where you can still move very, very fast, because again, we're talking about that fast-paced uh, world. So when we look at our customers, uh, we see that on the ma maturity journey, uh, they roughly uh, fit into four steps or stages. Mm -hmm. um, everybody starts at this reactive way of working or creative chaos, mm -hmm. um, and they're great sides to it because it's usually that prototype and experimentation phase but if you're staying too long in in that phase that will become a liability and the next phase um, that is more of a stepping stone to everything else mm -hmm. is you you need to get visibility into what's going on across multiple team across multiple projects and that uh, requires you to organize your operations. Um, and it's a huge step forward. It's where uh, we see the majority of the customers in this digital journey. Um, and, and, and it's by itself, 
it's exciting, but it's a prerequisite to the two other steps mm -hmm. um, that are even more important in the long term. And it's really an important step in that you, if you organize the processes at the right in the right way and you get the right people involved and don't create additional bureaucratic overhead, that really prepares you for the next step. Ex uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so the next step after that uh, that is very important for those digital businesses is once you organize it, now you can really scale mm -hmm. it. And that's what every entrepreneur and CEO and executive dreams of. Again, we, we developed this amazing product. How do we bring it out to, to the market? How mm -hmm. do we build that market share? And how do we deliver the service to millions of c consumers or thousands of our business partners? And then uh, it's never the end of the journey. So <laughs> what happens after that is that there's always both opportunity and need to continue mm -hmm. to optimize and evolve. Uh, you, if, you, if you've never saw this, you think, well, your best customers will figure it out once and kind of operate forever. Uh, it's actually not the case. The best customers are the ones that figure it out once mm -hmm. and then three months into mm -hmm. their journey, they're figuring it out again. And now they're, right. uh, they're either in increase the scale mm -hmm. or they improve the process. And then three months in, they figure it out again. Lean Six Sigma has been around for a long, long time, but what used to be years for an optimization cycle now might be, like you said, three months. And the companies that are the differentiators in business today recognize and embrace that optimization is going to mm -hmm. help you be that differentiator in, in the marketplace. Yeah, and my, my favorite examples, uh, one of my favorite examples when I talk to customers actually, uh, in industrial economy and automotive industry, mm -hmm. right? Where it started with people probably, you know, throwing parts and tools to each other. And mm -hmm. then one of the biggest and innovations was, at the time, was the conveyor belt, mm -hmm. right? The huge innovation that completely changed the pace with which the companies move. And then once they were able to organize that, they were able to scale. And right. once they were able to scale and the automation came into play. Then you see a company like Toyota that yeah. optimized by applying lean practices. Exactly. And that's, that's so. where we, mm -hmm. they get into this continuous improvement right. uh, nirvana stage, if you will. Mm -hmm. So as we talk to the customers about how they go through the journey, uh, how do they go from reactive to organize to scale to optimize, mm -hmm. we've uncovered um, seven principles that came over and over again in those conversations. And we'll go through each one of them in more detail, but mm -hmm. at a glance, it's predictability around their quality and delivery. It's agility mm -hmm. at the same time. It's collaboration across all, all of those uh, processes and projects and work. It's analytics and visibility. So you're able to see things across and you're able to react quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the single source of truth, that platform that allows you to get that visibility. It's automation that becomes the heart of that scaling effort. And last but not least, a little bit of magic dust, which we call the culture of excellence, and that takes you uh, further. So if we dive deeper into those seven principles and start with the first one, predictability, um, again, we're going back to the story of you were in this reactive mode, you figured out something, you prototyped, you delivered. Mm -hmm. Now, when once you're scaling it, it's crucially important for your business to first be able to predict the time horizon, uh, when can you actually deliver, build the product or deliver the service. And it's also important to ensure consistent quality across all those customers' experience and across all those products. Mm -hmm. so, so that predictability becomes very important. And at the same time, it's like you know yin and yang, where on the other side of it, you've got their agility. Mm -hmm. so, so it's not just top down, let's plan the next mm -hmm. uh, three years and everything is going to go according mm -hmm. to the plan. You know, uh, the reality is, is two weeks into this plan, competitor will ship something or the customer will come with the crucial insight into your product or one of your employees will come with an amazing idea mm -hmm. of how to make it even better or something because uh, essentially you're creating a completely new experience. You've underestimated something or something broke on the way. So there will be the new bits and pieces of information that arrive every week, every month, every quarter, and you gotta be able to react very quickly and still deliver. Mm -hmm. I once had a very interesting conversation with their VP of innovation at our public company. His direct quote was that, if we're able to deliver uh, at least 70% of our 
on our, of our initiatives, that would be the biggest innovations we could drive. What we've seen in the past is that organizations will invest, you know, organizations have invested significant amounts of money in traditional project management tools. And, you know, project management is important. You know, that tends to be the big ticket items that an organization is going to invest in to either build a product or serve set of services or, you know, deliver, you know, the new widget to the, to the marketplace um, or build, a, you know, construction, build the, you know, build a, build a house, build a bridge, what have you. Those are important. They're the big ticket items. But what can easily derail a project is the process work that has to support it. You know, and what we're seeing is as with digital, um, with digital business and with information workers, all work has to be valued because everybody does projects. You might not be a formally trained project manager, but you're going to be responsible for projects. And process and project work have to coexist together and be managed in a way that helps them complement each other. You know, all work, whether you, it's something that you've planned to do, whether it is that new product you're delivering, that might be more structured. It might require more people. Um, you know, could be construction con projects, consulting projects, IT projects, or they could be smaller and something that that might not be traditionally looked at as a project but is still structured things like you know application development that's a life cycle but it's still a structured process you know tech support very short but structured process those are all areas of planned work but they're a combination of project and process work so Work comes in two different ways. It either comes as that planned work that we talked about, or it is that customer situation. It is that great idea. It, it could be a conversation that creates work. What is important here to recognize is that it's the element of time, both whether it's process work or whether it's project work, there are two things that really make it essential for an organization. It's the concept of time and the collaboration that is needed. So what we see is that collaborative work really flows, is the lifeblood of an organization today. Everybody's an information worker. If you access the computer on your desktop, on your laptop, in your pocket, you are an information worker. You need information to get your job done. And if you are a product manager or a project manager that's delivering a product or project to market, you are going to be impacted by process. You might not have the right skill set in-house, but it's going to be a significant investment for the organization, so you want to bring in that skill set. Well, that's going to fire off an HR process, which then could fire off a legal process. You know, all of those things impact the successful delivery of your project. And, and that's why the third principle of that operational excellence that we continuously come over and over again, mm -hmm. it's, it's that collaboration, right? With context, in, yeah. In context, mm -hmm. correct. Mm -hmm. that, that's where we see the difference between uh, the companies that can manage those cross-functional mm -hmm. initiatives well, and most of the initiatives are cross-functional, frankly, mm -hmm. and the companies that don't. There, there's even uh, been new, completely new processes uh, that uh, industry came up with like Scrum. Right. And one of the big tenants of Scrum is this cross-functional teams. So you can see that, you know, digital really changes the rules of business. And it makes for that personalized interaction that you mm -hmm. talked about. Well, it has to be personalized, not just for the customer, but also for the employee as well. What that really comes down to is we're talking about collaboration in context. Because collaboration in context, it improves the processes and project uh, execution practices, whether, again, day job process, project, something distinct and, and, and specific, you know, it helps you reduce distraction and it helps you capture information in the right context. You can build awareness. So you're building that awareness using relevant data and content. You are capturing the right information. It's the value add that you're creating and it's giving you the information to analyze and make those decisions. And you're cr continually creating new content to, con to really build brand loyalty with that customer and, and b make that customer be a long-term client of yours. And at the end of the day, by bringing together all that collaboration, all that context, it actually helps you get to the point of what you were talking about, optimizing those processes. Did it take too long for the customer to respond? How do we improve that? So you really, you know, collaborative collaboration with context is, is 
a bigger, uh, it's a bigger um, element than just getting your job done. It actually helps you optimize your company. In our experience, uh, when we work, for example, with a strategic customer, there's so many different people in the company who are involved in helping that customer. So there might be a custom professional services request to help mm -hmm. build some functionality. There might be an impact on the roadmap where we take their feedback and we need to prioritize. Uh, that all uh, is very, uh, it, it could, could lead to miscommunications if there is no, no context and vice versa. The richer is the context, the better is the decision that will be taken by different teams. So there needs mm -hmm. to be that connective tissue. Um, and that of course, uh, and then of course the information needs to flow back to customer success and mm -hmm. sales representatives so they could um, walk the customer through the journey, make them successful mm -hmm. on the sales side that leads to their upsell opportunity. So we figure out, uh, we, we kind of, we, we so see in our company day to day that um, it's impossible to just put something under one team and right. make them successful. If you want to be successful, you're only successful as a company and you're only successful if those processes touch on different and teams. And that's the context piece when you know, companies have, have invested millions of dollars in collaboration tools, but collaboration tools outside of the context is virtual water cooler, as, as one of my associates likes to say. Um, but it has to really have a point to it. Yeah, yeah I absolutely agree. Mm -hmm. um, and so if, as we talk about those um, cross-functional uh, processes, or as we talk about this fast-paced environment where um, you got to deliver literally hundreds of projects a quarter, something that we see mm -hmm. with some of our customers at scale, uh, the only way to succeed is uh, for you to have that visibility across all that work. Uh, otherwise, it's like driving your car or flying a plane without a windshield um, or without the dashboard. Mm -hmm. um, both of the metaphors are correct. You got to have that visibility at the higher level, um, some KPIs that, that let you, uh, which are comparable to your dashboard. And you also have to have ability to drill down into the details and kind of see the details of the road that's that's ahead of mm -hmm. you. So we feel that um, in that fast pace, that, that visibility, uh, especially on demand visibility is very, very, very important. And this is where um, a, a lot of customers, before they go on this journey of operational excellence, they just continue to rely on emails and spreadsheets. Mm -hmm. And that's not scalable. Um, as, a, as a manager, as an executive, I could not get their required level of transparency if I just rely on the push of emails that come to me, I mm -hmm. will uh, I will die reading those you know millions of emails. Is 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 if my team is sizable and mm -hmm. if they're running a lot of projects, push is not the right model. I need to be able to pull uh, the right information at the right time when I'm making this decision. Again, whether it's a new idea, whether it's a problem that I need to address, I need to be able to act quickly. Right. And to do that, I need that information. And the only right way for it is if, I, if I'm able to pull that information. And this is a primary pain point. And I think it's a real um, opportunity for change right now. When we talk to information workers and we ask them, where do you, pri where do you access your primary data that helps you do your job? Only 27% of respondents said we have a centralized database. And the more digital and the more collaborative work becomes, the more varied locations become for accessing data from, from your phone to your desktop, to a file server, to a, a website that somebody's thrown up somewhere. So what all that is, is distraction. If you have to look, you know, first place you're gonna to go to is email, okay, to look for it. And there it's automatically static data. It's probably not even up to date. If you're lucky enough to go look at a um, look at a you know a database for that. It's still a distraction. You have to go look somewhere else for that, and all of those distractions and going and looking for data in different places to help you make a decision takes three minutes of productivity away. So if you think about every time you switch focus, you are losing three minutes of productivity. Yeah, and, and those three minutes set up uh, very quickly. I mm -hmm. think you did a survey or a study which uncovered that people spend about 35% of their day Yeah, 35% of their day in email. Yeah, um, and so that uh, mm -hmm. either looking for information or being blocked uh, by the lack of information from somebody mm -hmm. else, uh, I think is a huge drag um, mm -hmm. 
on, on teams and, and, and companies. So uh, one uh, theme that consistently comes up in customer conversation is that single source of truth, that, that idea that they got to have their reliable system where they can go in and pull that information on demand um, anytime. And have it pushed to you because if you're spending 35% of your day just searching email, that isn't reading email and and a little data point that's not on our slide is that most people check their mobile email 27 times a day well, 27 times a day you're constantly looking at your phone 35 percent of the time you're looking for data what that does is that drives down your productivity mm -hmm. where only 13 percent of employees are truly engaged to get their work done and only 18 percent of your workday is spent on actually doing your job that's, I, I don't know if- That if, makes if me that, feel a little nauseous. Uh, yeah, if, if, if I should cry at this point, right? It's like, like, we're laughing, but at the back of my head, it's like, it's- um, Laughing to hide the tears, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Uh, so, uh, and one of the challenges that I see in this uh, rapid uh, pace environment mm -hmm. is because the changes happen so frequently, it's becoming harder and harder to get the true picture of what's happening. And I have a joke, mm -hmm. which is only, you know, 5% joke is that, let's imagine you've got a great plan, right? Mm -hmm. And let's imagine that only 5% of it is incorrect. Well, if you don't know which 5%, then you can throw the whole plan mm -hmm. away, right? So mm -hmm. uh, it's very, very important to get that real-time updates, real-time status throughout the company. And this is where collaboration, which we just discussed, come, comes in play. You really need to, uh, make the system accessible to all of your employees so they can drive a lot of this um, update. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and what I've seen, uh, again, with the lack of that single source of truth is you would mm -hmm. have one system to collaborate, mm -hmm. be it email or something very, very fancy. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you would have a separate system to plan your work. Um, and then sometimes as you scale, you got a separate system for processes. And then it just doesn't work. There's so much, so much disconnect between all those sources of truth. Mm -hmm. People are working lo longer and longer hours, and at the same time have harder and harder time reporting up of like what they're actually doing. Right. Like, like, why do I need 20 designers? What, what are they doing? Why do I need uh, 40 people in my marketing team? So that hidden work is part of their uh, part of the challenge. It becomes harder to prioritize work and becomes harder to drive your strategic initiatives because people simply become overwhelmed with the with the uh, overall amount of work that 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 uh, that drives their their day. So I feel that single source of truth is the first step uh, on that journey. It, it helps you organize right. your teams, and that enables uh, future steps. Uh, I think that's the fuel. Automation becomes the fuel that really helps you take that information, curate it the right way, make the right decisions, and, and really help you, you know, validate the decisions that you're making. Yeah, and, and, it's, and it's an essential step to scaling, right? Mm -hmm. if, we, if we're thinking about delivering the same experience over and over thousands of times or to millions of consumers, that's where automation is, is, is key. Uh, it provides those guardrails that allow you to, 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 get, uh, to get the predictable results. Mm -hmm. At the same time, it allows you to react faster if you build it in the right way. So uh, with more advanced customers um, that sort of lead their markets, we see automation becoming a critical piece. And it's no surprise, there's been uh, a lot of studies um, around the topic that bring up that at least 30% of work could be automated. My personal anecdotal experience is if you're looking at the company that uh, runs something at scale, um, and we've got customers who run programs uh, literally with hundreds of projects a quarter. So when you're running something at scale, uh, at least 70% of that work is repeatable mm -hmm. in one uh, shape or form or another. And then 30% is that unique component, right? And so that gives uh, you a opportunity to do much better. It also gives opportunity for something to, to sleep. It's like if one or two or three or five of those projects are done a little bit different or a little bit worse uh, or a little bit later, you know, you, that that's where the challenge is. And so right. auto automation helps you put those guardrails. And it's interesting where 
uh, today if you open any business magazine AI automation uh, like you can reliably bet on the fact that it will be in one of the articles and maybe even on the cover mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, what we see and what what's interesting is that it's been there for a long time like uh, first of all if you look at the industrial economy that was very very natural step in that evolution from creative cows to conveyor belt right. to then automation mm -hmm. um, and and the culture of excellence uh, now if we look at digital uh, uh, our customers, uh, the, the, our best customers that I see, have actually been automating their work for quite a while. Mm -hmm. And that spans across planning, where uh, when the new project starts, they're, they already have pre-built library of templates that they can instantiate and then customize. Again, going back to that 70-30%, mm -hmm. so 70% is the same, and that's why they can build those libraries. 30% is unique, and that's why they can customize each one of right. those projects. Uh, automation helps them to even pick up the right uh, assignees and put the right people on those projects. Then on the process side, uh, there's a lot of uh, opportunity to automate work intake and the, the right. passes uh, to whom this work gets and people that it connects and eventually the system right. that it connects. I don't think, you know, when, you, when you think about that, that metric of only 18% of your day is going to the actual project work that you do, if you can automate to you know, work intake, if you can automate, you know, put, putting together a, a quick plan if it's, if it's a small, repeatable project that you know you need to do or or get the right people involved to begin planning something that's a bit more substantial or or mission critical you know, think about the, the just the level of productivity that, that goes up and yeah. just wasting time trying to get the right people involved if you can find them fast you know, that's the whole point about AI sometimes it's scary to people but when you really think about it, it allows me to focus on the work that I'd rather be doing exactly than the work that I have to do because we don't have the practices in place and we have to reinvent the wheel every time. Yeah, and, and one of the uh, very, very uh, dramatic examples that I saw, we, we were um, helping a, a con big consultant company in Europe and they had a Monday meetings where they synced on projects and it literally took them nine hours uh, to go through all those projects, <laughs> right? It's like, think about your Monday meetings and compare <laughs> it with them, right? Um, and so once they were able to put that single source of truth, um, they were able to automate a lot of reporting activities and their meeting cut down to ni 90 minutes, right? Mm -hmm. And you would think, well, 90 minutes is terrible. For them, it was, uh, you know, it's it was wonderful. a lesson, sure, right? Sure. So, so a as you run things at scale, there are a lot of opportunities to automate uh, planning, process, collaboration, mm -hmm. and, and reporting. What we also uh, seen and what we're playing with internally or with some of our customers and, ex and kind of building their, the future roadmap um, is around uh, automation between people and tools. Because uh, as we talked before, those, all of those processes, they touch multiple teams and multiple systems. Um, so we're looking into how we can connect those uh, teams and uh, tools together in, in one environment that would blend, uh, mm -hmm. blend through the process. Yeah, I think that's really exciting when it allows you to be, to work smarter, not harder. Exactly. So you can identify that this is a community of practice that I need to be talking to or these are other programs that might be impacted by what the work that I'm planning on doing. You know, that's the part that I think is important because so much of project management tools in the past or, or um, you know, time tracking or task tra tracking tools in the past were really a look in the rearview mirror. It was, what did we do? Mm -hmm. You know, how well did we do it? Did we make our numbers? Versus, you know, or did we hit our marks? versus how can we, okay, we have a new opportunity and how can we do this better? Yeah, and, and that's where uh, I think uh, a, lot of, um, a lot of interesting innovations will come uh, in, from us and in the industry in general mm -hmm. around insights where the paradigm will shift from reporting. Uh, when you have the, those gigabytes of data, you can really go from the reporting to insights mm -hmm. where the tools can, uh, instead of forcing you to go through 300 projects mm -hmm. like every Monday, mm -hmm. they can proactively ping you like, okay, please dive into here. It's either an amazing success or like a looming right. challenge. And uh, yet while the other 200 projects, they're doing exactly what they're yeah. supposed to be doing. So let's let them keep going. We don't need to focus yeah. on that. Yeah. Let's focus on what's yeah. value or yeah. risk.
And, and a couple of other uh, interesting areas uh, that are even more forward-looking. Uh, one is, uh, I think there's a good opportunity to automate those repeatable actions like mm -hmm. you des described. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are statistical and AI methods that, that allow you to do that and potentially connects this to this business rules where you can delegate some of that to the mm -hmm. tools. And then there are also interesting opportunities around natural language processing mm -hmm. and trying to figure out your intent and provide some soft assistance that will help you uh, save those three minutes here and three right. minutes there, but if you multiply it by uh, hundreds of times a day, mm -hmm. that, that turns out into uh, pretty... Real productivity gains, right? Real productivity gains. One last piece is uh, for, for us that, that we saw um, is that culture of excellence uh, and continuous improvement. It goes back to the fact that any major business transformation is uh, first about people, then about process, and last about tools. Tools enable you to succeed processes is what make the success repeatable, but people is ultimately at the source of mm -hmm. all the change, mm -hmm. both positive and, and challenges, right? right? And, and so that culture of excellence um, is extremely important. And as you, as you organize your work, as you scale it, last but not least, there's a lifetime journey of continuously improving mm -hmm. that. And that's what we right. see. It's, it's the triangle of people, process, and tools, and that the process and the tools you know, they are, they're more constant. You can determine how you're going to grow them. But the people piece of it is the most important. It's the biggest unknown on how people are going to react. But if you, if you achieve the right balance of, of process and tools, you can really empower people and make them feel like, you know, I, I'm really contributing to this. And that can help drive optimization, you know, mm -hmm. in that faster time frame that we talked about yeah. earlier. And that's very important in mm -hmm. a creative economy and mm -hmm. very important in the, in the digital economy. Right. So, so as we talked about those seven principles of operational excellence, I wanted to map them mm -hmm. to that organizational journey um, okay. that uh, we see the best companies going through. Uh, that starts in that reactive creative chaos mode. Mm -hmm. and, and if they're able to succeed there, and that sets them up for their future success. Now, across uh, the next three phases, all of the four principles apply equally. So mm -hmm. that predictability, the planning component applies to organize, scale, and optimize. Same goes for agility. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what is your stage of matur maturity, you need to be able to react quickly. Correct. And that's what uh, some of the companies trip over uh, as they grow their business, they mm -hmm. become slower. So that agility in your tools processes and culture is very, very, very important. And I think they, they sometimes become slower because they don't consistently apply the people process tool mm -hmm. paradigm, you know, with the appropriate levers mm -hmm. as, they, as they grow. Um, sometimes when more people are involved, you might have to, you know, leverage maybe a broader collaboration stream mm -hmm. to bring people in, but you don't recognize that. And I think that's yeah. an, another opportunity where automation can help that mm -hmm. and make that optimization move more smoothly than what we've seen in the past. Yeah, and that's that's uh, sometimes that I've, uh, I I sometimes joke on the topic like uh, you know if we've got five people sitting in one room it doesn't actually matter which collaboration platform they use that's they true. could all stand up mm -hmm. and talk mm -hmm. versus if you got three hundred people across the globe and if they're trying to coordinate. Uh, 20 different projects at the same time and relying on email or chats mm -hmm. and spreadsheets to do that, they're setting themselves well, up. Well, chaos grows without, exponentially. You know. <laughs> yeah. and so, and then uh, we just talked about collaboration as, mm -hmm. their, as the centerpiece of all those uh, phases. Mm -hmm. um, and then visibility, again, you cannot drive the car without seeing what's in front of you. Mm -hmm. So all those four principles apply equally. Now, uh, the last three principles, I feel they got a certain affinity to a certain maturity stage. So single source of truth becomes the enabler of that organized phase, which becomes the enabler of everything else mm -hmm. to, to come. Mm -hmm. As you scale the processes, automation becomes uh, the core and it is at the heart of it. And then as you get to their scale, that culture of excellence and continuous improvement drives you forward where the best companies reinvent themselves uh, and reinvent their processes mm -hmm. on their journey. And that's what allows them to stay competitive uh, through their years and through their uh, different cycles of technology disruption. Now, if we talk about uh, that triangle of tools, uh, processes, and people, we talked a little bit about processes. I think you've done amazing research in tools and kind of helping 
uh, industry and customers and everybody define that collaborative work management category. Mm -hmm. So it'd be great to hear your thoughts on that. Sure, thank you. Um, collaborative work management is it is a it's a market that is really so well suited for digital work because you know everything that we've talked about about the confluence of people and processes and processes and project work and different types of collaboration technologies you know there's a way um, you know companies need to find a way to get focused and I think that what we've seen with the advent of collaborative work management is that it's a it, it's a solution set that really is particularly well suited for information workers and digital work so what we mean by that is um, the you know there is uh, people's lives are um, are you know, so busy today and in 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 the information uh, worker market and in digital marketplaces today you are needing to bring together a number of different work streams you know you have your you have project work that you're being tasked to do, whether you are a project manager by trade or not. Uh, you have your process work that you have to do on a day-to-day -day basis to help deliver products and services, help service customers. Um, what you have, your personal life that you have to manage along with all of this. So defining collaborative work management, uh, we, we define it as the ability to bring together the task element. Again, everything is time-driven no matter what you're doing, you have an element of time and you have an outcome that you need to achieve. So collaborative work management allows you to bring together tasks, activities, processes, and manage the time frames. It's the effort that you need to put in to get the job done and everybody wants it by next week. So you need to be able to manage that effort duration time frame in a way that works for you, not being constrained by traditional scheduling practices. Sometimes you may need to use them, but very often you don't. So having the flexibility of managing both. Being able to share knowledge. Everybody is working on content today. As I said before, documents, contracts, proposals, you know, offer letters, whatever, whatever you need to do as part of your day job, that's all information, customer-based information that you are sharing among your peers, with your partners, with your customers. So everybody is creating knowledge, understanding the context of the work that they're doing, and that's impacting the documents that they're working on, the content that they're working on, in order to be able to serve customers better. The two elements that I think are really important about collaborative work management are workflow, number one. Workflow allows that decision making that we talked about. It allows that notification and getting everybody on the same page. You know, it's, it's getting that common language down so that everybody understands what they're responsible for and how they can help deliver that best product or service. And finally, integration. You made a great comment about CRM with customer management, customer information, and maybe some sales and marketing information. Well, collaborative work management via integration can take some of that customer information to build up that knowledge base that's going to help you collaborate more effectively. And that fits in, I think, very well with your seven principles of scaling. That having uh, a set a solution that's going to help you in, solve problems. It's great when you can solve problems at the team level, but if you could take that problem solving and then move it up to the enterprise, move it up to 10 teams, 15 teams, all you're doing is creating better customer service, improving productivity, making employees happier. It's all about discovering the best value for your organization. You know, let's stop focusing on looking for things in email. Let's start focusing on solving problems. Mm -hmm. So you're bringing greater value to your organization. And when you're able to bring value to your organization, it allows you to look at the big picture far more easily. You're not wasting time on minutia. You're really saying, how can I get this product delivered? When that workflow, that automation, and that knowledge sharing results in successful outcomes, you begin to empower people. They feel better about their job. They feel like they're more engaged, and they have a say in delivering higher, uh, you know, higher um, degrees of value and, and, and more positive outcomes. That allows you to drive optimization because people feel like they have a say, they're being heard, they're empowered. And at the end of the day, if you're putting all of these together, what you do is you get speed. You actually do work faster when you remove the barriers. What it re really requires for the end user is they don't want more tools, they want tools to do more. 
So they want that consolidated workspace that is personalized for them. If I'm in marketing and you're in product and we're both working on the same product, there's, we both have overlapping issues and interests, but we also have things that are specific to what we need to do. So we can have conversations that, are, that have shared interests and, ha and can um, uh, positively impact each other's work because we see the context of mm -hmm. the work that we're doing, but we're able to curate that in order to know what's important to us and it's not just noise. Everybody's working on documents. Even if you are in manufacturing, even if you are in product development and design, you're doing design specs, you're doing, you know, you might be doing drawings, you might be proofing, you know, media content. All of that is collaboration and document sharing and you've got to be able to manage the flow of that without having to jump out into another tool and have that distraction. And then finally, at the core of it, you need to manage how you get your work done. That's the planning piece. Am I going to do task A, B, and C, or C, B, and A, that because I'm working on maybe two or three different campaigns at the same time? And when you do that, you bring that together, you get benefits. I mean, organizations are really seeing benefits out of collaborative work management. I've interviewed companies that are seeing, you know, uh, uh, you know on average, a third uh, reduction of time spent in email because the work is coming and the content and the feedback is coming to them, not them having to go look for it. You know, we're seeing a 35% reduction in meetings where, you know, the average hour long meeting, you spend 45 minutes in discussion and review, final 15 minutes you make a decision. Well, if you can do all of that review and discussion prior to, while you're in the context of actually doing the work, you can cut down on meeting time significantly. You know, what does that do? When you reduce time, when you reduce waste, you increase quality. You remove error, you get rid of errors, perhaps remove defects if you're dealing with you know, software or technology, you're improving your customers, uh, you get customer feedback faster so you can improve the quality of what you're building and delivering. That allows you to cut down on time. You find it faster, you cut down on schedule overrun. You know, speaking to that point, at the end of the day, what it does is it improves customer satisfaction. Yeah. You, know, you get higher customer satisfaction because they are seeing results faster. They can provide feedback. You know, so it, it, it fosters better customer relationships. So you get, you know, we're seeing companies, you know, one company that I talked to increased their customer satisfaction by 25% within the first quarter of using collaborative work management tools because they were able to resolve problems faster. You know, net promoter scores, we're seeing, you know, services organizations that are using collaborative work management. You know, they're seeing uh, an improvement. One company I talked to, 30% improvement in net promoter scores, you know, within six months of putting in collaborative work management. Uh, as we kind of uh, reviewed the category, maybe you could provide us with their overall recommendations. Sure. Uh, you know, I think number one is you get the transparency when overall work is valued. Traditional project management tools covered 20 to 30 percent of what an organization invested in, those big ticket capital projects, while, you know, 60 to 70 percent of, or even 80 percent sometimes, was just keep the lights on. If you value all work, then you get that level of transparency and you have, you know, you get to be able to make better decisions about what's most important to you. Um, it also allows you to identify where you need to centralize, where that contextual information really needs to be shared. And you know, frankly, there were specific use cases we're seeing as collaborative work management moves further and further into the marketplace, we're seeing more and more use cases where most people in a company will benefit from some type of collaborative work management. Um, you use collaboration to be empowering rather than directing. You can lead your team rather than manage and direct your team. So it really empowers the team to work together more effectively. And, and finally, I think you know what we talked about with collaborative work management really does take into consideration all the seven steps that, that you described earlier in, in automation for the workplace and optimization mm -hmm. for the workplace. To, to illustrate all their things that we talked about, um, I want to show the platform that we've built over the last 10 oh. years, which is a very, very powerful collaborative work management solution uh, that allows you to implement those principles of operational excellence in, in your day-to-day -day work. So when we started, um, the first uh, biggest drive uh, from our customers came from for that single source of truth. Uh, I saw that um, in, in my own work life and then once I developed the product, I saw that in a lot of customers that you need to start with that single source of truth. You cannot 
uh, get to any scale in the digital world if you're just juggling their emails and spreadsheets. Mm -hmm. It's very, very painful. Mm -hmm. uh, I lived through that journey. Mm -hmm. You know, I worked more and more hours. You know, once it gets to 80, it, it, it's no longer sustainable. And then as we, as our customers grew and as we grew with our customers, mm -hmm. uh, it was very important to implement that um, power and flexibility at the same time. Uh, and it also goes back again to their uh, sort of ad hoc versus process versus project work where if you want to be successful, you need to manage all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I, I, I like to say that it's either you're managing your work or the work manages you, <laughs> right. right? And so see, I say you work for the tool, or the tool works yeah, for you. Exactly. <laughs> so, so that uh, that that flexibility and that being able to capture all that work together um, is very important. And then, as as you get that foundation, what we've been uh, doing um, in the last couple of years is building those intelligent mm -hmm. processes and automations on top. And that's where I, I see the future to come. I think there's a lot of innovations that are still going to come from us specifically, from the industry uh, as well, where uh, we'll help customers move even faster uh, with this intelligent mm -hmm. automation. So uh, our journey uh, was very successful. We've got about 14,000 customers today. We continue to grow rapidly. Uh, and I personally think that uh, the whole category and the whole market is 100 times bigger. Uh, I think every single uh, digital business needs a platform to, to scale and to run. Mm -hmm. And I think every business out there uh, will have digital component uh, sooner or later if, if it wants As to I stay said, competitive. We, you know, start out with very specific use cases, but those use cases are they're just, they're just growing and growing. I think one of the best illustrations out there um, is Airbnb, a company that I personally uh, love and admire. Uh, I'm a customer myself. Uh, I also uh, look up to them in terms of uh, poster child example of the digital transformation mm -hmm. where they came to a very traditional industry and very, very quickly were able to deliver a completely new experience uh, that made consumers' life better, uh, that made, uh, created a lot of business opportunities. Um, and that, frankly, pushed uh, others in the industry to think creatively about how they deliver those experiences and kind of innovate across the whole industry. Um, so we were uh, lucky enough to help um, Airbnb in, in a little part of that journey. So uh, they were launching a very interesting and innovative product called Trip Experiences. Mm -hmm. And as we talked, they had a very, very smart team that was able to figure it out. Incredible product, incredible business opportunity. Where we came in place was their scaling time, right? So uh, they started with a couple of, uh, with several cities, but now as they needed to uh, scale it across hundreds of cities, across multiple continents, they needed that uh, collaborative work management platform mm -hmm. where they can truly coordinate the work of 16 different teams we can they they could implement the processes, but at the same time stay agile. Um, so I'd love to welcome uh, Hoon, who's our director of creative services there, to speak about his experience. Airbnb is a way for people to travel and live like a local, and now get to do activities that locals do. The culture here is great. First and foremost, Airbnb is a hospitality brand, and so everyone here is extremely hospitable. It's a very nurturing environment. At the same time, we're extremely busy. Before we were using Reich, everyone kind of went into their own worlds and didn't talk to each other. That created chaos, that created a lot of communication errors. We really wanted to make a big splash um, by announcing trips. We knew what the end product needed to be. We are actually able to automate a lot of the process. What we've done is, is build out custom workflows for each of the different types of assets. Then we could actually keep track of the process for trailers or posters. I think the biggest advantages of, of Reich is that there's so many different ways to look at the projects and kind of where your tasks are. Um, you could either look at it just on the, the straight detail level, across table views, you can look at it across dashboards or reporting. The ability to be nimble in terms of how you're looking at your data really allows us to be more iterative in our process. Whereas a lot of time was being spent trying to find information, uh, now by utilizing Reich, people are more self-sufficient to seek out that information on their own. We're extremely busy, there's a lot of work, and it only helps that the people that you work with, you really like that makes the job much easier. Thank you, Margot and Andrew. Now let's take some questions from the audience.
First question. You talked about the seven principles. How should team leads approach each of these principles if they are really just starting out on the basics of getting organized and striving for higher productivity? The first element of this is the people process tools. You do need to start with people and work with your team to identify you know, what, what language is important for us to use. You know, what information do we need in order to do our jobs? How should we work together? How do we want to use the tools to help us work? So I think having that conversation is very important because when you're in those early stages, you know, you're just trying to get stuff done. You're just trying to solve the problem. Now you have an opportunity to maybe take a half a step back and say, okay, what worked, what didn't? How do we want to use what worked to help us work better? But you need to have that conversation that everybody's on, so everybody is on the same page. First and foremost, as, 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 you, as you mentioned, it's important for them to realize the why, right? Mm -hmm. uh, usually, uh, unfortunately, usually there is some unpleasant moment <laughs> that, that drives their urgency. Sure. <laughs> um, uh, it's ideally people are, you know, forward looking and they envision the problems mm -hmm. and uh, resolve them before they come. But in true real life, there's usually like, oh my God, moment, moment yes. that, that drives that, that change. And it's important to then understand what's the goal of all of it mm -hmm. and be aligned across the yep. team that yes this is the goal and this is important goal because mm -hmm. um, uh, change requires effort um, even if it's the simplest change uh, and and so it's important for everybody to understand why why are they on that on why the they're doing it and, and what's in it for them how are they going to benefit yeah. by doing this uh, for me one of the simplest uh, and at the same time most important tactics is to Think about the cadence, because mm -hmm. we're people are creatures of habit, uh, you know. And so, if you if if you just come in with an abstract term, for example, we want to create the single source of truth. Mm -hmm. Agreed, agreed, great, we're we're done. No, you're not <laughs> done, because <laughs> like, like the question is, who is actually gonna bring the data together? There, there's mm -hmm. got to be somebody who's uh, responsible first to oversee the process, right? Uh, there's and then. If you decide that the team needs to bring the data in, then everybody on the team needs to be on board and then they need to follow through uh, every day or every week. So, so, so that, that is a trickier balance and that is where um, I, I think uh, some of our consultants help customers and mm -hmm. sit down with them and try to figure out, okay, what's that critical process? How do we map it and how do you go through that um, journey? Last question, what advice do you have for CXOs looking to drive cultural transformation around productivity and work management? Again, I go back to if you want to drive greater productivity, I think the first thing that you do want to be thinking of is making sure that you're, that you, you're looking at productivity that's going to help you achieve your organizational goals. So that's number one, you, because if you want to be driving uh, productivity improvements, you want to make sure that people are working on things that are important to the company. So establishing those, uh, those objectives and, and having those conversations, I think, are very important. I think at the C role, what you want to do is use this. The, the, these, this technology is really an empowerment tool. And if you want to drive productivity transformation, you want to give uh, your, 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 the people on your team, you want them to know that what they contribute to the organization is incredibly important. And by tying what they do to the outcomes that are achieved, and it doesn't always have to be financial. It could be an operational improvement. It could be a process improvement. It could be an employee engagement improvement. But if you are demonstrating that we're doing these things to work more effectively as a team, we're providing this opportunity to redefine processes as a team, and we want your input on this, and we're going to provide you with tools to help you visualize and see a better way to work. I think that that you know is, that 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 goes a long way. And when I talk to various executives at the C-suite, you know the ones that really get it uh, know that empowering their people is the most important piece of this. And by giving them the right tools and just enough process, mm -hmm. when we see uh, this, the customers that excel at this, usually this tied to this journey of scale in their mm -hmm. business. It's not just uh, we'll become the best in the world and we'll, we'll still stay uh, like, like tiny, mm -hmm. you know, it's usually 
they got ambitious goals, great results, and they want to continue to become better, bigger, um, more efficient, stronger. And they look at the long-term goal. They, re they realize they have to get there in increments, but they're willing to, s to recognize that this is a longer-term journey. Yeah. Yeah. And, we have to, and we have to treat it as such. And that drives that continuous mm -hmm. improvement process, which ultimately will drive to better collaboration and, and applying all the principles that, that we spoke about. So, Margo, thank you. This was very insightful and uh, engaging. Thank you. No, I really enjoyed it. And thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, you can definitely find out more by reading more of Margo's research. Um, you can also uh, follow through uh, our um, content uh, with the Resource Center and some of the materials that will be linked at the end of the webinar. I hope you'll um, find interest and insights that you can apply in your day-to-day -day job to help your business become more competitive and win your market.